We want to begin our reading this morning on, in the 90th Psalm. A psalm that is popular and appropriate to be read at the funerals. A time of reverie, a time of meditation, a time of reflection. But we don't want to wait till we come to the funeral to consider the things of God. And we don't want to feel like that the things of God are sad and morose and dreary, because they're not. Amen. There's joy, full joy in the presence of the Lord. Amen. But there are some requirements that God requires, yes. amen, for us to qualify for the joy of his salvation. And that the gospel is preached that each would have opportunity to avail themselves of the glories of heaven, or failing that, the loss of the other destination. This brevity of life, we want to consider that right now. It said, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling placings in all generations. Now, before the mountains were brought forth, that's a long time ago, but before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. You see, God had plenty of time, if you want to call it, amen, in glory and on his throne. Not so with you and I. When I drive through the country and I see where they cut through the mountains and the hills to make the highways and I see the uh, layers of the earth tilted. One time them was flat. But some upheaval or somewhat has pushed them up out of the ground. Some earthquake or volcano or, or some disruption long time ago has pushed these mountains up. And before they came up, he was God. Before the earth was founded, he was God. Yeah. And people try to tell us about our evolutionary progress coming up through the ages. And they don't know. They're surmising and guessing. But God was there. And he knows. Yeah. And the time, very, very long time, a goal that the mountains were brought forth. That something happened, some event took place to shove the mountains up. As the earth may be cool or, or internally uh, disruptions and heat and volcanic uh, material down there. Sometimes we got too much. Sometimes the earthquakes, uh, or they say the shelves and the leaves that are the different layers slip and when they slip and they ease and they slip and they slip and they move and move and all of a sudden one day it drops and the earthquake shakes the earth. And up come hills and up come mountains sometimes and there's no uh, uh, a record of it way back yonder before man was even up on the earth. Amen. The mountains come forth. And some have come forth since then. With our God. From everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God. And we want to compare the longevity and existence of God with man's shortness. Amen. The scripture says, Thou turnest man to destruction. You say, Return, ye children of men. Our lives are limited, very limited. The earthquake shook the earth about 20 seconds, they say, last week. Thousands went in. Thousands were caught up in the turmoil and, and were crushed to death. Houses fell on, fell into the cracks and the grimaces and whatnot. We don't know what happened to them. But the Bible said, you carry them away as with a flood. Thou turnest man to destruction to say, return ye children of men. We want to look at this in contrast with the busyness of man while he's here in his brief moments. 
Man is here for a little while, and he do as he please, as the same, and ignore God, but he is forever. And thou turn man to destruction, say, return ye. Go back to the dust. Right back to the dust you must go. Return. For a thousand years in thy sight, or is but a yesterday when it is past. A thousand years are nothing to God. For everlasting to everlasting and throughout eternity he is God. And he's the head of all things to the earth. For he that had made us, not we ourselves. Amen. But man in his short brief life here. Amen. Ignoring the maker. Amen. The one that will turn him back to the dust. He is busy enjoying himself. Let me have my fun. And he'll soon be ground back into the dust from which he came. Oh, when the dirt and the mountains and the rocks were uh, uh, boiling and turning and twisting and over there in uh, 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 Japan, down there in California, uh, last, uh, LA last uh, several years ago, and up there in San Francisco, even now threatening. Amen. When man fall into the crack like the sons of Corey. Amen. When the earth pushes up the mountains and down go the valleys uh, and rivers change their course. Man. Amen. He's having a great time ignoring the power and the strength that is even in nature. Amen. And the weakness that is in him. We are mortal man. Know he's going to die. A thousand years in God's sight or was it yesterday when it has passed? As a watch in the night. Where are you going to get your thousand years to carry on like you are? We're not going to be able to ignore God upon this earth and have a great time for a thousand years. Uh, let me tell you, you're not going to do that. No, sir, you're going to be gone before that. Hey, Amen, we got to go from here. He said, thou carriest them um, away as a flood. With a flood. They are as a sleep. Our life and man's extents of the extent of man's life. They are just as asleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth. Amen. It boasteth itself. Amen. It brag. Uh, amen. It let me go here and I'm going to do that and this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to get my education and then, amen, I'm going to get me a, a house and I'm going to move over in such a place and, and thus and so. Uh, uh, my job is going to be thus and so. Uh, we just make plans for living and we just got a short time to do it. From everlasting to everlasting, he is God. Yeah. Amen. Before the mountains were brought forth, he was God. Amen. When he spake the sun, to, uh, cause it was in his place and the earth was hung on nothing. But he, and he is God, but we're talking about in our short span of life, what great thing we're going to do and finish up and go to hell. They carry them away with a flood. There's a sleep in the morning. They are like grass which grows up. And we come up and say how cute he is, or how cute she is, and look like a mother, look like a father. And you turn around a few days, uh, amen, and God's earth spin around a few uh, days, as it were, and the teeth fall out and the head turn gray, and they're ready for the grave, and not ready to be saved. And haven't gotten saved yet. Haven't gotten saved yet. Amen, haven't looked to God yet, haven't uh, considered the Creator yet. In the morning, uh, it flourishes. Oh, it's got dimples. Oh, look at that pretty black hair. Oh, look at it there. Isn't she a doll? Before long, the undertakers uh, come to the door and haul them off and put them in the grave. Why, in the sight of God, our days is just like a sleep. Because his are so long and unending uh, that ours seem so short. Well, I saw a picture of Brother Jack the other day. I think it was him. Was that Brother Jack he showed? I said, who's that? Is that Robin? No, that's his daddy. And it looked like Robin. And somebody was feeding him and getting him dressed and things like that. But now, look at him. And now here's Robin. Who thought of Robin? There's another Robin. Time is moving on. But despite all of that, he is still God. Amen, he's young as he was the day, amen, that uh, Jack was brought forth. Amen, there was a time when Methuselah was a baby and God looked upon him and blessed him. 
But he's gone. It's like a, 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 a watch in the night. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up in the evening it's cut down and withereth. For we are consumed by thine anger and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee. You see, growing old is not just a matter of growing old, but there's some life uh, and some living involved with it. And we don't have time to live right or live wrong. We've got to do whatever we're going to do because time is moving on. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. The old, uh, uh, we're hanging up the new calendars and before long we'll be taking them back down. Yeah. And I can remember we picked out, uh, uh, maybe about 10, 12 years, we've been uh, uh, distributing the calendars among the saints. And when 10 years at 365 uh, days per year, Times 10. How much is that? 10 times 365. 3,650 some days. How long does it take for 3,000 days to go by? I mean, what if we haven't gotten saved in 3,000 days? We're still sinning. Amen. We've been sinning for 3,650 days in the last 10 years. If we're not saved. The God in heaven looked down upon us and we sinned for 3,000 and 10 years, 3,600. We've been living in sin. Every day, every day. Amen. People say, well, why don't you get saved? I don't have time for that. You just had 3,665 days in the last 10 years. Now we can double that and then 20 years, what have you been up to? Amen. And now time is moving on uh, and we don't have time to do what God wants us to do. From everlasting to everlasting, He is God, but our days are limited, but yet sufficient. Amen. Amen for us to get right with God. Amen. In the morning, it flourisheth. In the morning, we have high hopes. One of these days, I'm going to get saved. You just watch me. I'm going to be saved one of these days. I'm not going to live, amen, like a rat all my days. Amen. I'm not going to be a rebel all my days. One of these days, I'm going to give God His due and yield my heart over to God. Yeah. But right now, I don't have time. And you're practically right because you don't have much time. You don't have much time, but we're letting the time we have drift by, amen, unseen. Amen, we are occupying our mind in vain things uh, and occupying our time for vain uh, things to do. We are consumed by thy wrath, thine anger. By thy wrath, God is looking at us. He's angry with the wicked every day, and we already spent 3,600 and some days in the last 10 years. Amen. We can, as it were, look at our calendars and watch the days pop off. Pop off. And we come down to the close of the day and we say, Lord, it ain't fair. As some said, it's not fair. I'm ready to live and I have to die. See, so you've been here. This woman is about 70 years old. They said that. Now, how much is 70 times 365? Now, I'm not going to try to all do that in my head. Somebody might come up with it. I want to challenge They might come up with it out of their head, but not me. 10 times 3,665 times 10. That's 100 years. You're not going to get 100 years. Forget it. You might, but I doubt it. Very, very unlikely that you'll live to be 100 years. But you might. But even if you do, and die unsaved, what a reproach. Thou carry them away with a flood. Amen. I just pictured in my mind, uh, amen, a funeral today. And I see the hearse winding toward the cemetery. And I see 25 or 30 cars behind it, and they're all going out to the cemetery. And then I picture in my mind that all over the world, how many people died yesterday, or maybe. Three or four days ago. Sufficient to get the family together. Amen. Sufficient to uh, call the undertaker and get a hold of the insurance company and tell them we want to cash in um, in that policy. The benefactor has someone to bury. And then I see all these bodies, uh, amen, headed for the cemetery. And I would say it does, it's like a flood. It's like a flood. I look at the obituary in this little town called Springfield. 10, 12, 14 each day. And then I look at Cincinnati, Cleveland, and Columbus, and Akron, and Dayton, and it's a flood. It's a flood. 
People are going in. People are dying. Amen. And look at the great city, Tokyo. Los L.A. and New York. And look at their obituaries. Take a whole page. People are dying. But yet each of us say we got plenty of time. Don't you realize there was a time that those folk had plenty of time? But they God not going to give them forever. They're not going to be eternal. They're not going to live long days like the hills. They're going to get a little while to get ready for God. God speak to their heart several times. If they don't respond, return, old son of man. Get out the way and let somebody else come out. That might do better. The days of our, uh, let's see, for all our days are past in our wrath. Why? Because it's, God is angry with the wicked every day. And we spend all of our days under the wrath of God. We spend our years as a tale that is told. And that's what it is. It's just uh, our years as a tale that is told. And everybody got something to say about what we used to do back in the old days. Well, I remember. Some people, well, I'll never forget. I don't use that term, I'll never forget. And we should be using it. Because that's in the future. And we don't know what the future brings forth. And you could be a doddering, tottering, old senile individual before you think. And you will forget. And I'll never forget. You don't know about the future. You only know about the past if you can remember that. And if it's sin, you will be reminded at the judgment. Remember, son. Thou hast said our iniquities before thee. Our sins are before God. He knows what we've done. There's no need of coming down as some do to the altar. Well, I never was too bad. You, the wicked, shall be turned into hell. And that's where you're going if you don't repent. Yeah. All have sinned and come short of glorifying God. All have. And we all need to repent. Except you repent, you'll likewise perish. There's no need to sit there thinking you're going to luck into heaven somehow or another. You're not going to get in there by luck. You're going to have to get in there by some particular effort. Amen on your part. We are consumed by the anger. With our wrath, I'll be troubled. All our days has passed away in wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. Some get their tail, their tails, uh, amen, about the dirt they got into. Oh, I remember we turned over old McDonald's outhouse. Oh, I remember when we said, oh, sister, what's the name's a uh, hay pile on fire. Oh, I remember, amen, when we stole this and where we stole that. Amen, where we were out at night one night uh, and blowing horns on cars and letting air out their tires. And we remember, yeah, ha, 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 ha. And it's right on record that our sins are set before him. He already knows and our years going by. Oh, I'm telling you, some of you in here got lots of things to tell out of the past. If you could remember them, most of the fun we had sinning, we don't even remember. We just kept on doing it. But God remembers. The days of our years are three score and ten. Amen. That is our normal lifespan. Three score and ten if you're 70 years old. Everybody's not going to be, uh, make 70. Some of you in here is planning to sin on for a good while, won't get to 70. No, sir. Some of you are going to only go and make 20, and some are going to make 30, and you're going to cop out on that. And some are going to make 80 and 90 and 100, but you're going to average out about 70. 70 years. 70 times 365 years. And we'll knock off maybe about four years or five, maybe for your childhood, irresponsibility and lack of knowledge. And after we get them all added up, we'll knock off five years. Uh, maybe uh, that may be too many, but we'll just try that for the five years of your innocency. And then you became guilty when your conscience started working and letting you know what's wrong and God started writing against you. Because you knew that was wrong and you did it anyhow and God wrote it down in his book. And all of our iniquities are rebellion. It is written before God, according to here. And we may think nothing of it. Maybe we just ignore it. Maybe it doesn't occur to us. Don't even bother about our record. Maybe we're not even concerned about it. So what? Ho hum. But some men's sins go ahead to the judgment, and some men's sins follow after. And the only way you keep the sins that you have committed from following after to the judgment is to get them rid of them. Amen. Go before God and get those things forgiven and sent on to the judgment. And they'll be right, canceled. Canceled, forgiven. But he says, some men's sins follow after. And now you all of a sudden become concerned about those years that passed. For Christ was angry with us because of our bad performance. 
He made us for his glory and you glorify the enemy, the devil. Oh, you smoked and God said, your body's a temple of the Holy Spirit. And you had no business smoking. And we drank and we cursed. And we stole. God remembers that first dime you stole. Amen, off the counter out of your mama's pocketbook. Every sin, the Bible said, and every transgression shall receive a just recompense as repayment as your reward. People say, God can't remember all that. I got a machine home. I turn it on, flip the button, and I hit a couple more buttons, and I can find out what John 3.16 say. Yeah. And not only, it's got the whole Bible on record in that computer. The whole Bible's in there. And there's a lot of other things in there. There's a dictionary in there. About 15,000 words a dictionary in there. So I can uh, look up, check a word out in there. See if it's spelt right. Yeah, and then there's a multiplier in there. And it'll multiply and divide and subtract. It's in that machine. And I go to bed, I turn that thing off, it's off, and it's sitting there. It's sitting there all day long, and all that information's in there. Although I can't, you know, I'm not using it, but it's in there. All I've got to do is turn it on. And I have what you call a PC, a personal computer. They're bigger ones than that. God got the mainframe. Yes, sir. He got a supercomputer. And he knows everything. Oh, yeah. If we can get everything practically in a computer, surely God had it on his record. And he's smarter than us because he made the one who made the computer. Amen. So don't you think your, your sins are not on record? You can go down to the courthouse and they can pull up something on you too pretty quick. Amen. We got a, a, a police band radio and uh, uh, they stop you on the street out there. They say they're having a traffic stop. They get your uh, license and look at it. And they pull your record up from wherever you are. They give you the license number down at headquarters and on their computer they can pull you up from New Mexico and tell you who owned that car and man, where it came from. That's right. And they'll track you down too. So you better behave wherever you are nowadays. Now how, what makes you think God don't have you on record? Well, what makes you think that he hasn't forgot you and he hasn't forgot, amen, the stars and he hasn't forgot, amen, the moon. He hasn't forgot, amen, the uh, orbits of the planets. He hasn't forgotten. No, sir. He hasn't forgotten the seed that's down in the ground waiting for spring to grow up. He hasn't forgotten the pigeons and he knows even the sparrow when he falls. And he keeps this thing running. If man was running, we'd have forgot to bring summer sometime. Amen. I've been late with spring, but God don't forget. Amen. He hatches the eggs that down under the weeds and you don't even see them. Amen. They're turtle eggs in the sand. You don't even know they're there. You say, well, we spend our time in vanity. We spend our days. Amen. As a, what? As a watch. We are consumed by the anger. All our days have passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength, amen, by reason of strength, amen, because you're good exercise and you're excellent diet uh, and fortunate enough to stay out the street and when the trucks come by, amen, they reach four score, which is 80 years. Amen, you still haven't escaped God. I mean, you still have not escaped death. The living know that they're going to die. And if we die in our sin, where he is, we cannot come. He said, it's a point where a man wants to die, and after that is the judgment. And if we die in our sin and to be determined there, amen, where he is, you cannot come. So we're going to have to go somewhere, and it won't be him. And it's not going to be here on earth either. Say, well, where could it be? You'll find out. Well, that's just a fairy tale. You're dreaming. You're wishing. You be, you be, you listen, if you're any good at dreaming, and if you can dream change anything, you better dream. You better dream that it's a dream, and you better hope that it's a dream. It's not going to be at all fortunate for us to wake up at the sound of the trump, having died in our sins. 
All our days have passed away in thy wrath. All the days. Don't let it be so in our case. Let's don't be under the wrath of God all of our days. Yeah. Amen. Let's don't waste our time, uh, amen, in the advantages of sin all of our days. Yeah. Amen. Let's not let our days, uh, amen, be occupied with trying to be cool. Yeah. Amen. Let's not let our days be occupied in chasing a gal uh, or running after a man, uh, amen, or smoking a cigarette, imitating Joe Camel or somebody. Yeah. All of our days are spent in wrath. Be angry with the wicked every day. We're building a house. Amen. We're building our last day testimony. Every day we are building our testimony. Amen. About whether we are wise or whether we are vain. Amen. Whether we are proud or whether we are humble. Amen. Whether we're looking for heaven or whether we're surely going to wind up in hell. Every day he's talking about as long as God has uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to, has existed. If you can speak of that uh, limited manner of God, amen, maybe we can speak that way of the mountains. Because they're old. They were here and rose up in the earth's turmoil. And maybe in this creation, we don't know just where it come from. But we know we're still having turmoil under the earth uh, because of the vast size and the weight of the earth. Amen, that the weight of the earth, because quite often weight may create heat. When the earth is spinning on her axis, millions and millions and billions of tons of weight is pressing on the core. And the heat causes her to expand certain ways uh, and causes the crust of the earth to twist and go earthquakes. And sometimes that heat escapes in the cracks and blows up through the air. And whoever's around, look out. You're going to get a hot shower. Uh, you're going to get, amen, a sample of the judgment. Fire and brimstone. Nation had been destroyed. Mount Pentu, or whoever that was that we were dealing with not too long ago. The Mount Halina up there in uh, Washington, we were dealing with too long ago. How the dark in the sky and, 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 uh, and lowers the temperature of the earth because the dust covers the, uh, uh, filtered out the sun. Power coming out of the center of the earth because of the molten condition there. Amen. And then uh, um, uh, we don't know everything, but I'm going to tell you one thing, but the mountains came forth and cooled down. Uh, amen. And here we are. Say, how old is this mountain? This mountain. Well, we look at the trees and count the rings and try to see how old this tree was. This tree is now 238 years old. Well, this tree was here when George Washington was. Oh, this tree right here. i tell you this tree... I was here when Paul Revere rode by. But how old is the mountains? And how old will you be when God says return to the dust from which you come? And the silver cord is broken and the soul returned to the God that gave it to the custody of God. Days of our years are just three, three score, 60, 70, and maybe a little stronger than others. We live to be four score. Yet is your strength and labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off anyhow. And we fly away, not the body, but the soul. So teach us to number our days. Teach us to number our days. We're not numbering our days. Amen. When we're smoking and drinking and lying and stealing, we're not numbering our days. We are not considering that our days are numbered. We're not considering that our days are numbered. I mean, you're here today and you're not saved. You're not considering, amen, that tomorrow may be your last day. Yeah, amen. amen, we're living back there unconcerned uh, and indifferent. We're not realizing that our, the sequence is going to stop one of these days. Amen, that uh, the uh, page is going to quit coming off the calendar in your case. And they're going to put it in stone. Die. 1995. Maybe February the 15th. It may be sooner than you think. Amen. While God's days are rolling on and the mountain is still standing there, amen, back to the dust you have gone. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Soul will return to the God that made it. When the soul come forth out of the womb, uh, amen, as a gift of God. In the body. We realize that it is a gift of God. Go, God furnished the soul for the body and he's also arranged for the body 
The Bible said we're his. It's he that has made us and not we ourselves. We're his by creation and ownership, but we're not his by adoption. We're not his by choice. Therefore, he don't have to have us. Amen. Teach us to realize that our days are precious. It's what it means. Teach us to number our days that they're going to cease, that they are precious. You can't get ready for heaven when you're in hell. Amen. The grave cannot praise God. Amen. There's no worship in the fern cliff. Or there's no worship in the cemetery. Amen. Not among the dead folks. There will be no amens in the graveyard among the dead folks. Some folks are afraid to go in the graveyard at night, but don't worry about it. They're dead. That we may apply our hearts. Teach us to number our days that we may apply, apply our hearts unto wisdom. How much wisdom is involved with your living? How much wisdom is involved with your living? We spend our days as though they're innumerable. We spend our days like we got a great big pot full and there's going to be more after this. Well, if you're a saint of God, there's more after this. But if you're not saved, there's more after this also. But neither case is it in this realm. It's in heaven or in hell. The days cease not in heaven if you call them days of time. And in hell, the same thing. I'm glad they don't cease in heaven, but I sure hope I don't go to hell. Because they won't cease there either. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Amen. If we had 10 billion days, uh, amen, even that would run out eventually. Or if we had 10 billion years, eventually it would run out. But you don't have it. He already told you. You're going to average out about 70. And some of you will be gone a good while before 70 so that those that reach 80 and 90, amen, can be averaged down. Amen. Return, O oh Lord. Did you say return? How long? I don't know. You don't know how far is the grave. We don't know how close it is. How long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. Let me tell you something. The wicked going, going into hell. He said, Oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy. Don't wait till you come on your deathbed looking for mercy. He said, Let's do it early. Seek the Lord in thy youth. Call upon young men because you're strong. Amen. Oh, satisfy us early with thy salvation. Satisfy us early, Lord, by your mercy. There's some here today that are going out of here. Now pay attention to me. Listen here. You're going to leave here and you're going to try your best to forget what I said. And let your days run out. you like the man in the wintertime to let his oil run out. And his family froze to death. Because he didn't check his oil supply. Well, the man got caught in the blizzard and didn't have enough wood at the house. Had planned any day to go back down in the woods and resupply, and he didn't. And when the snow came and it hit up six foot, well, he couldn't get any. Can you see somebody out in the woods with four foot of snow trying to saw? You can. And I've read these stories. All these people that these things happen. Yeah, then they got ready for the future. They were just rejoicing in the present. And that's the way it is today when you're living in vanity. Yes, sir. Just rejoicing in the sin and the foolishness that I can get involved in today. I'm enjoying myself. It's a great time. I ain't got time for God. But there's going to come a time and you ain't have time for nothing else. Right. But he said, you satisfy us early. Don't wait till you get older because you may be dead by the time uh, your 60th birthday roll around. You may have been cold a long time ago before you were 60. Trying to get three score in sin. Oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy. Oh, that we may rejoice and be glad all the rest of our days. I mean, the saints can rejoice because they have, amen, they have the, uh, the life net under. Amen, we have the loving arms of God to catch us if we should... Perish if we should die. And we have salvation, I tell you, amen, to guarantee our safe deliverance into the arms of the mighty God. Yes. So we can rejoice. When you're saved, you can relax somewhat. But if you're not, living, you're not saved, if you're not saved, you've got every day to be concerned about whether I live or die. You have every day to be concerned about that. The man said he went and sat on the bar stool and, and the Spirit said to him while he was sitting on the bar stool, he said, and he looked around in that bar and he said, the Spirit told him, you and everybody in here is 
lost. And he was sitting on the bar stool, and the Spirit told him, you lost, and everybody in here. He said, satisfy us early that we may rejoice, that we don't have to worry about it. Every sin and every transgression receive a just recompense. You're going to be paid. God said he will not justify the wicked. There's not a wicked deed God's going to blot out until you cup the full repentance. You can't get saved half, halfway. I mean, you can't do something wrong, kill somebody and repent of that and think you're going to heaven. I mean, you can't steal a wallet and, think, and repent of that and think you're going to heaven. No, sir, you've got to get the whole slate washed off. You've got to have all your sins. Uh, Christ remembers all of them. He's not reaching in the bag to pick out two or three. He's going to take the whole bag and throw it as far as the east is from the west. If you repent, if you repent, you can't get partially saved. God expects for you to have true repentance and that will save you every whit. Oh, satisfy us early, Lord, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us, amen, with our convictions, uh, amen, that thou hast convicted us, amen, with our shortcomings, our failures. Help us to get the past, uh, amen, the trash of the past out of the way and get full repentance and forgiveness. Let thy work appear unto thy servants. And thy glory unto their children. Amen. Let our children see, our, see the parents saved. Amen. Let the children behold a saved life. And let the beauty of our Lord be upon us. As he said, he would beautify the meek with salvation. Lord, beautify us in the sight of our uh, kinfolk, in the sight of our neighbors, in the sight of our children. My God, give us that salvation that beautifies. Oh, that this is, uh, that ornament that is written of that in the sight of God is a uh, Great price. Lord, grant it unto you. Children, save us. There's some here today that can go home beautified. If you get rid of your selfishness and vanity, self-will, people won't get saved. I want to do what I want to do. Don't you know that's rebellion? That's what iniquity is. It's rebellion. Amen. It is not a matter, amen, of, uh, uh, of freedom. Amen. You can liberty because I can do what I want to do. No, it's bondage. Because you can't do what you would like to do. There ain't too many people want to go to hell. Not too many people want to be wicked, but, you are. but if you're not saved, you are. True liberty is to get rid of it and live as we ought to. Now, liberty to do what we ought not be doing, I would say that's a gender bondage. Liberty to do what we want to do actually is bondage. Because what it is, it makes you a victim of your will. Now, liberty to do what we ought to do and a will to do what we ought to do, that's liberty. That's real freedom. Yes. Amen. To do what we ought to do and we want to do it, amen, that's liberty. Yes. Amen. You call liberty doing what you want to do and that's bondage because you can't stop doing it. Yes. At the time, you should be giving God glory, uh, glorifying the enemy. Amen. Some have put him to an open shame and re-crucified him by backsliding from the loving God. What did he ever do to you? What did Jesus do to you? And in what way has he mistreated you? In the short time you live in your God said, all I want you to do in this little short segment of time is live for me. Yeah. Amen. 70 years, if you can make it, 50 years, or whatever, if you can live for me when you're dead, that little short period of time, I'm not telling you to stay saved long as the mountains, uh, amen, have existed. Amen, I have not told you, amen, from everlasting to everlasting you must live for me. I have only told me that in your lifetime, son, that's all I want out of you. All I want is a holy life while you live in, that's all. Not forever, God, I'll take care of that part. You just live for me while you live it. Amen. And some don't start out when they, start, uh, when they first get started. They don't start out until they're 20 years old. Well, then give me the rest of it. God is fair. He's just. Give me the rest of it. And some are saying, well, not today. What are you saying when you don't say today? Let me sin a while. I'll get saved maybe next year. I plan to get saved someday after I rob God of a 10 or 15 years of righteous living. And then I'll get saved. Is that fair? See if you can offer that to your loan company. See if they'll loan you some money on those terms. Then I tell the judge, I'll be back and serve my sentence when I get through sinning out here. You see if you'll take that. 
Because God is gracious, we take advantage, presumably. Your life work is to build a house for eternity. For eternity. And some are not working on your building at all. Some men send their material on up for the match early, and some don't. Lay up your treasures in heaven, he says. Lay your treasures up in heaven, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God only looking for a little while out of your out of existence. Methuselah had 967 years. How would you like to stay safe for 967 years? Oh, I can't. Oh, I couldn't stay safe that long. I'm going to tell you. Oh, I'll tell you too many pretty cars out there. Amen. Too many pretty girls. Too many handsome men out there. Amen. Too many wine uh, bottles out there. Too much. Uh, what are you? I mean, what is this keeping you out there? I was trying to think of something. I couldn't think of too much. Wine, women, and song. What else? Why is it else do people want to stay in sin? You can sing in the church. And we got women in the church. So you want to want some wine too? Well, you can come on in. We'll take you to the Lord's side. So now what are you going to stay out there for? Now why are you going to stay out there in the world? Why are you running for the world when you know you only have a little time to get back to God and you can't come back except that he call you? He has to bring you under conviction. Don't you know you need conviction to be saved? And do you know you can't convict yourself? Don't you know you have to come under condemnation by the Spirit of God before you can get saved? Your life work is being neglected while you satisfy the flesh that's going to the grave. Your life is the flesh is going to the grave. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to play this. I want to play that. I want to do this. I want to be free. I don't want nobody to tell me that. I, I, I. And one of these days they're going to stand over you with a handful of petals. Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. If the good Lord don't get you, then the devil must. And you're gone. And you're not going to be in the grave hollering, I want to play basketball. You're not going to be in the grave talking about, I want to marry. I love this man. You're not going to be in the grave. Amen. Down in murmuring and complaining about what I want. That stuff's going to cease because all that you wanted is only for this life and this life is too short because your life is gone. And it won't be important anymore. There's nobody in the grave committing adultery. There's nobody in the grave fornicating. Amen. Nobody down there gambling. Uh, 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 they're not playing cards in the grave. Most folks are down in the grave by themselves. Amen. They ain't lying. Cheating. No, sir. They have ceased that stuff. Why? Because the days are gone. The psalmist said, teach us to number our days. Help us not to get out of bed in the morning and waste the whole day and go back at night and don't even say, God, thank you for the blessing. Amen. Teach us, dear Lord God, to count our days as precious because it takes the days for us to serve the Lord. Yes. We need the days to serve God. And we're running out of days. How soon shall we return, Lord? How long? Your life. We're going to conclude this. But you're heaping up wrath. The Bible says you're heaping up wrath against the day of wrath. When we live to ourselves in sin. I know it's your own business what you do. I know you don't tell me it's my business what I do. That's your business. Keep talking that way. When he said depart from me you curse it. Just keep on saying it's my business. Just go on down into hell. And when you're burning and hopping and jumping down. Or whatever they do in hell. Let's say that's my business. Thus it will be. We're going to conclude. Lord, teach us the number of our days. Matthew seven twenty four. Therefore, whosoever hear, you don't have to hear if you don't want to.
Therefore, whosoever heareth these things of mine. Are you listening? Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. It don't matter that you were raised in church. The matter is, do you do them? Many have heard and will not do. Many want to go to heaven but have not started. That hear these sayings of mine. And he said plenty of things. And doeth them, I will liken him to a wise man. A wise man to know a bargain when he see one. A wise man that observe the uh, expanses of eternity. And the days of the earth. And we don't know how old earth is and we're not going by the scientific analyses because the science has come up with too much phony. But we can imagine, I don't know, what if the earth was, uh, say, I'm going to hit real short unless I don't get into nothing. Uh, we can count back recorded history maybe about 10,000 years. That's pretty good while. Chances are maybe older than that. But I'm just talking, you know, this is 5,000, 4,000. What if it's just 2,000? You think you could last 2,000 years? Who are, how many in here could live 2,000 years if they had a chance? I think you'd run out of a couple, 300, 400 years. <laughs> but anyhow, I would like anyone to a wise man. A wise man observes the expense of the time that he can perceive, whatever he can uh, uh, grasp in his mind, uh, and sometimes it's uh, beyond our grasp. But God said, out of that 5,000 years, I want you to serve me for 60. I tell you what, if you'll serve me faithfully for 30, wait a minute, out of those 30,000 years, you give me 10 good, faithful years. And I'll give you eternity in heaven. Is it a deal? Well, let me think. I mean, a wise man don't say, let me think at a deal like that. How old is the earth? How old is eternity? I mean, how old is the heavens? How long shall uh, your soul continue after the, it dropped the body? Give me some years. Give me some faithful years. I ain't got nothing to give. I only got 10 years. I only got 30 years. I only got 40 years. Uh, amen. And uh, my first wife didn't work. And I got to have get me another one. And my second one didn't work. And I got to find me another one. Amen. I only had five cars so far. And I need a boat to go with it. Lord, I ain't got that. And people keep talking to me. I yell at them. Yes, I yell at them. I resort the right to yell at folks. I mean, people yell up on my back. I haven't got time. I do unto people as they do unto me. That's the way I handle it, Lord. I ain't got time to get no 20 years of that kind of living. That's why he said concerning Lazarus, when the rich man was in the grave, he said, send Lazarus. He said, listen, Lazarus can't come. There's a great gulf fixed. And he can't come across the gulf. And you can't go there either. But yeah, well then send him to my house. He said, listen, if one rose from the dead, there's some folks who wouldn't serve me. If somebody rose from the dead and went to the house and knocked on the door and went in the house and sat down on their bed, they still wouldn't serve me if they knew they was dead. But I said, God said, if I'll give you, if you give me 10 years of service. When Abraham was seeking a man release for Lot over there in Sodom, he said, would you save the city for uh, 50, for 60? Would you do it for 50? Would you serve the city for 40? Now don't get angry at me, Lord, I... No, I'm kind of pressing a little bit. Would you save it for 25? But now, Lord, now listen to me one more time. Now, would you spare the city for 10 righteous? And the Lord was gracious and brought it all down to where he wanted. He still couldn't save Sodom. There wasn't none right down there. Now, Lord, would you spare us if one got saved this morning? Oh, what about if five got saved? Would you spare it? Say, Lord, yeah, I'll spare it. If five wouldn't this morning get saved, 
Well, what, Lord, if only four got saved this morning? Lord said, well, I'll spare them if only four got saved. Well, <clears throat> I know I'm pressing a hard bargain, Lord, we're dealing with you, but how about three? If three got saved, Lord, God, would you bless us? I'll save for three. And he got down to the back where he just said, I ain't saving nobody. Ain't nobody getting saved, that's all. Hearts are that way. So God said, out of them, uh, uh, people say, well, we only a million years old. The earth's a million years old. Well, would you serve, Lord, if, if somebody served you for ten years out of that whole million, amen, God, would you have mercy, I'll save them, and I'll put them right in heaven. Yeah, yeah but they're already 50 years old, uh, 50 years of sinning, Lord. I'll save them if they give me the last ten. If you give me the last ten years of your life, I'll, I'll, I'll save you, put you in heaven. But Lord, 50 years of sinning and debauchery and crookedness, and you let them go to heaven for 10 years? Yep. But Lord, how about just five years? Would you put them in heaven now, amen, for five years? If they get, uh, 55, if they'll give me their last five years. I'll take them to glory. But Lord, what a deal. Well, don't be angry with me, Lord. But listen, we better name our days, because you're going to run out one of these days. Lord walked off and went to his place, and the fire and brimstone rained down on Sodom, why I couldn't find nobody that wanted to serve God. And if we're back to those days, he says it wasn't the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. There's people sitting right here, and they wouldn't get saved if the angel came to sit on their bed. Amen. If mama raised out of the grave, thank God, and come and told them, son, get saved, they still would. Why? There are some people's minds are predisposed to be saved. Amen. God has worked with them, and that if God can't get through to you, you, can, you won't get saved. Why? Of the wickedness that they still wanted to be involved. What in this world is it that will keep a man from serving God? What is it that is so precious and so important that you can't give up a few years of that filth, amen, and get saved? Few years of wickedness, bad examples, prejudice, fornication, whoremongering, selfishness, strikes, fights. Sports. Super Bowl Sunday. I almost forgot that. This I heard this. This is Super Bowl. A big hype. A big foolish and a big phony. Amen. <laughs> Putting the thing together like going to be something really great going to happen today. Oh, something really great going to happen today. Oh, I tell you. Well, Jesus may come. <laughs> it's just another old day that they did in a... Uh, hawked it up to where it means something so they can sell them tickets. Them tickets they sell them down there, what, two and three hundred dollars? And you ain't seeing nothing but an old common old game, same thing you would uh, listen. You ain't seeing nothing. So it's going to be a super game. No, it probably wind up maybe 40 to 10 or something. Ain't going to be no super game. Even if it did, what good will that do you? When the judgment fires roll out. When the judgment fires roll out and the wrath of God breaks out, what good is going to do? But what have you done in those years I gave you? Those few days. What have you done? Well, Lord, I saw two Super Bowl games. He said, go to hell. And if you need comfort down there, remember the two games you watch. There ain't nothing but men out there running around bumping into each other. That's about all it amounts to. It ain't got nothing to do with getting your life straightened out to meet God. It had nothing to do with this, uh, four score, uh, three score and ten. It had nothing to do with it. So teach us the number of our days. Amen. All the miles that you've driven, all the cars that you owned, when you get ready to lay down, you still won't have them. You're going to live so you can have it. So you can live so you can have it. All one God, God wants out of you is a segment to his glory. Start out and don't turn back. And the gateway to heaven is open. God has promised you that much. He's reasonable. He said, come let us reason together. Let's stand. God said, come let us reason together. Now God has been very faithful. Don't say his ways are not equal. Now just hold still and it's not going to take us long. Amen. To get these four or five that want to get saved this morning. Amen. Amen. Maybe they'll come forth right out of here. If God can't get them saved, then I...